Apple have revolutionized the mobile and tech industry over the last four decades and recently became the first firm in history to reach a valuation of $2 trillion in August 2020. In this episode of Business Explored, we will delve into the genius of the world's first trillion dollar corporation. Before we get started, if you like what we do, please subscribe and let us know if you have subscribed in the comments. We are also on the lookout for more video ideas, so in the comments, please let us know which business you would like us to explore next. Let's dive in. Stephen Paul Jobs was born on February 24, 1955 in San Francisco to Abdul Fattah John Jandali and Joanne Scheibel. Bud was adopted by Paul Jobs and Claire Hagapian, a Bay Area blue-collar couple whom Jobs is eternally thankful for. Jobs was intensely immersed in electronics by the time he was 10 years old, and he knew many of the engineers in the area while attending Mont Aloma Elementary School in Mountain View. Jobs' interest in electronics grew over time and was further enhanced when Bill Hewitt, the co-founder of the IT technology giant Hewlett Packard, gave Jobs a summer job when he was only 13 years old. Jobs went to Homestead High School with Bill Fernandez, a fellow electronics enthusiast who later became the user interface architect and innovator who was Apple Computer's employee number four. Bill Fernandez introduced Jobs to Steve Wozniak in 1971, and the two Steves got along owing to their common passion for technology. The two Steves attended Homebrew Computer Club, a computer enthusiast organization in Menlo Park, California. Wozniak created the first computer with a typewriter-style keyboard and the ability to use a conventional television as a screen. The machine was eventually called the Apple I, and became the prototype for all current computers. On the 1st of April 1976, Wozniak sold his HP calculator and co-founded Apple Computer Inc. with Steve Jobs and Ronald Wayne. Jobs persuaded Wayne to take 10% of the firm's shares and function as an arbitration if he and Wozniak ever got into a fight, but Wayne left 12 days after, selling his share for $500, a position that would have been worth $72 billion 40 years later. A year later, the Apple II was released, which was a much more commercial product and came with its own case. It was one of three Trinity computers released in 1977, each having a technology processor running at 1 MHz and 4 KB of RAM, and was widely acknowledged with launching the home computer market. The Apple III was designed to compete in the business world and was released on May 19, 1980. Because it lacked the cooling fan that Jobs desired, the company had to recall thousands of Apple III computers. On December 12, 1980, Apple launched its stock IPO, instantly creating more millionaires than any other company in history. The Apple I, II, and III computers were text-based machines similar to the earliest IBM computers. However, Jobs wanted something more intuitive. As a result, the Lisa was released in 1983 with a graphical user interface, and the Macintosh was released the following year. After a protracted power battle with Apple's board of directors, Jobs left and started a new company, Next Inc., that specialized in computers for higher education, bringing a few Apple employees with him. Jobs' company was a success and in 1996, Apple bought Steve Jobs' firm. This would not only return Steve Jobs to Apple's management, but it would also provide the groundwork for the Mac OS X operating system, which was released in 1997. At the 1997 Mac World Expo, Jobs took over as CEO and began a major reorganization of the firm. One of Jobs' first acts after Apple stopped licensing its operating system to third-party computer makers was to create the iMac, a series of all-in-one Macintosh desktop computers. The first iMac was debuted in 1998 after Apple had experienced a series of defeats due to consumers' preference for Wintel Windows PCs over Apple's performer models. When Apple began building software for the burgeoning market of personal digital devices three years later, the iTunes Music Store was launched with 2 million downloads in the first 16 days, and the initial version of the iPhone became publicly accessible. While it wasn't the first smartphone, it leapfrogged well ahead of the competition and ushered in the mobile revolution. The MacBook Air, unveiled in 2008, was the most significant upgrade in Apple's laptop line in years, ushering in a whole new category of machines known as Ultrabooks. Sadly, Jobs died in August 2011 of respiratory arrest caused by a pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor. Despite his untimely death, Jobs' legacy has shone bright, with Apple continuing its upward trajectory. 
In 2014, Apple paid $3 billion for Beats Electronics, a company you can learn about in one of our previous Business Explored videos. Apple has introduced 11 generations of iPhones, as well as various versions of iPad. The iPhone is one of the most extensively used cell phones in the world, and its popularity has been attributed with helping Apple become one of the most valuable publicly listed corporations in the world. So if you're using an iPhone, please let us know in the comments below. So that's all for today's video. We will get back to you with another video soon. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you will be notified when another video is released. Thanks for watching.